Hey guys, in today's session, we will look at how we can build a simple HTTP client in Elixir. So HTTP is a straightforward protocol. The whole RFC is not too big, so you can uh, you, you can you know pretty much read it in a well, in a couple of days. But the basics are really simple, right? Uh, you make an HTTP request over a TCP connection. Um, and you send some text. So HTTP 1 is a text uh, protocol, which means um, HTTP 1, 1 1.1, and HTTP 0.9 are all text protocols. HTTP 2 is a binary protocol, which we won't be looking at in this video, but um, HTTP 1 is like a straightforward uh, text protocol. So um, recently, some guy joked that they could do they could rewrite curl, which is kind of funny because you know curl is huge. Uh, but what we'll be doing is like we'll be implementing a tiny slice of it, which is uh, its ability to make simple HTTP requests. Um, and we won't even touch HTTPS. We'll just use HTTP, right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be able to uh, make a request to a site like ICANHasIP.com and uh, be able to get the response and print it out and also maybe potentially see the headers and whatnot. So uh, with that, what I did uh, was I just did a mixed new simple HTTP. This is like a simple module. And uh, let's open up the file and I'm going to delete the whole thing, right? So we're starting with a fresh, um, with a fresh empty module. And what I want this module to have is a function called request, uh, request, which uh, takes a request and um, executes it and returns a response, right? So we're saying we'll take a request and uh, that request is gonna have some info in it. We're going to execute that request and we're going to re return a response, right? So let's define the request module. And uh, what does an HTTP request have? It has a lot of things. Well, it doesn't really have a lot of things. It has um, a URL, right? So let's we'll say devstruct. Uh, it has a URI. Let's say it has a URI. And let's uh, initialize it to default it to nil. It has a method. And let's default it to get. And it has some headers, it's defaulted to an empty list. And it has, so actually, you know, just, just to make this easier, I'm gonna, let's say we'll default it to an empty map and a body, which is going to be a default uh, to, to nil or an empty IO list. And uh, just to make the creation of a request easier, I'll say it's gonna take a URL and uh, it's going to initialize a request with the uh, URI is um, URI.parse URL and uh, method is get headers is an empty body, empty map, body is an empty um, IO list. That's good. And uh, to test this, we're going to open, uh, open an IEX session and we're going to hit uh, our site, right? So um, IEX minus S mix is what we want to open. And uh, what we want to do here is uh, say simple HTTP dot request. And we'll send it uh, HTTP request new. And we'll request uh, using HTTP, I can has ip.com so that's going to execute our request and give us a response right okay so let's just do some debugging info here print some debugging info here request as request and to do that we'll uh, require the logger um, and what we want to do is so again you know if if you think about it what happens when you make a request is the first thing that happens is uh, your computer opens a TCP connection, right? So 
uh, you open a TCP connection from your computer, the client, to the server. And we're talking about HTTP here. And over this TCP connection, once it's established, you send out some text. And that text, if you're using HTTP 1 or 1.1, 1 .1, will look something like this. And again, this is for a GET request. So it will look something like this, GET slash, which is the path, uh, HTTP slash 1.1, which is the HTTP protocol, and then followed by a slash R slash N, which is a carriage return and a line feed. And then you have more, right? Um, so the, I'm, I'm going to say at the end of the line is a carriage return and line feed. And then we have, um, you know, something like a host. So this would be I can has ip.com. And um, then you would have an accept header, which you don't have to specify. And again, every line is ended with a slash r slash n, right? And uh, that should be enough, right? So you have a slash r slash n here. And then um, another empty slash r, you know, empty line followed by the body. But since get requests don't have body, they can have a body, but say this guy doesn't have a body. So you send this chunk of text to the server and the server is going to send you another, like uh, the response is a chunk of text, which is going to have its own um, specification in a structure right so we'll look at that in a sec so what i'm doing here is i'm uh, um, we're making a request yeah so we're making a request to i can has ip using curl and um, it has sent a request uh, and if you see this is exactly what we um you know thought it would send right um so it send it sent a get slash uh, HTTP 1.1 because we are using HTTP not HTTPS. User agent is another optional thing that you can send. And then an accept header. And then the server returns some text. Um, and it starts with this line. So it says HTTP 1.1. So the server says, all right, I'm sending you a response which um, is in a particular shape. And to understand what shape it is, go read the HTTP 1.1 protocol, right? And that says, you know, you have the version of the protocol followed by the status code, followed by a text description of the status code. So 200 OK is kind of redundant because 200 means OK, but that's how it is. And then slash R slash N, then the date when the response was generated, which is an optional header, the content type, um, and uh, content length, connection info, and whatnot, right? Uh, so uh, I can has IP has some extra headers, uh, which are just you know telling us, hey, you know, just some fun headers. Um, but there's some Cloudflare headers, which is what this site is hosted on, uh, which they internally use, I'm assuming, and then there is an all service header finally there's a slash r slash n and the body which is just one line of text which is my ip right so um hmm, that's i shouldn't probably be exposing that but anyway um so 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 we want to do that right and just to just to drill this down one more time i also have wireshark open here and uh, wireshark here is telling us so let me clear this whole thing and uh, we'll make another request and you'll see that um, so let's look at this stream um, so follow TCP stream um, actually I'm gonna say TC okay so that's the TCP stream right so we op the first three packets are the you know TCP handshake right so um, curl opened uh, a TCP connection to port 80 on the server with a sin request sin packet the server sent back a sin ACK and then our client sent back an ACK so the, the first three is the TCP dance right so the first three packets after which our 
client sent this request, right? So it said get slash HTTP 1.1 host da, 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 da. and you can see uh, all these are um, all these end in a backslash uh, R backslash and which is uh, a, a carriage return and a line fee, right? Zero D zero A. So those were the hex codes for that. And then the server said, okay, got your packet. So that's an act for the previous packet. And then the server sent the response and the client closed the connection. Server said FINAC and then they're just acknowledging that they've closed the connection. So this is all what, ha you know, this, this is what happens when you make a simple request. So let's do that in Elixir, right? So um, to open a connection in Elixir, you can use something called Gen TCP if you're just looking at a TCP connection, you know, plain TCP connections. If you want to open up a TCP connection with TLS on top of it, you can use the SSL module. So uh, Gen TCP um, for plain TCP and SSL for TLS, okay? And I know SSL is kind of a misnamed module because it's not really SSL, it's TLS. Um, anyway, we won't go into those details right now. Uh, right now, what we'll do is we'll say, I want to open a connection to the server ICANHASIP.com, right? With an IP, ICANHASIP.com. So uh, the way you do it is you say Gen, Gen TCP Connect, and you can look at the documentation for that, right? Um, and Gen TCP Connect, it says, takes an address, and the address is, um, the address is ICANHASIP.com. So um, just note that this address is uh, this address is um, um, a text, a card list, right? A, a character list, and then you know we'll specify two things um, um, as options. So we'll say AT. Okay, I want to clear this. Um, so AT, we're connecting to port 80. Want it to be a binary, and I want to say uh, active is false. So those are a few options that we use. And once you use that, you get a connection. So that's our TCP connection. And to start, to start sending data, we can actually send any data, we can use uh, gentcp.send. So gentcp.send um, connection, and we wanna send that request, yeah? So I'll say get slash uh, HTTP 1.1 slash r slash n, uh, host, I, so ho the host header is mandatory, right? It's required. Um, I can has ip.com. The others are not really required. So I'll just say slash r slash n slash r slash n. That's a good packet. So that, so we're saying, I want to get um, the resource at slash. And now we send that data. We can receive that data by just running receive and then we're saying how many bytes do you want zero means how many ever bytes you have and we also say i want to wait for and the timeout is a thousand milliseconds so um now this guy says it actually closed right so there's so this tcp connection was closed by the server and we didn't get any data now to debug issues like the, these it's good idea to open up wireshark so let's we are still capturing Wireshark traffic, right? So what I'll do is we will um, filter on this IP. So I'll say, um, can we copy this uh, copy? Um, oh boy. So, so I'll say uh, IP address equals to 104.22.19.188, right? Because that's the IP of the server. And what's happening here, right? So this is the packet we sent, right? So we sent cat slash da 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 host I can has IP, right? And the server just sent a reset request. So the server for some reason is isn't happy with this. So let's do it again. Yeah. So we'll open a new connection. Say uh, OK connection, and uh, we'll send that packet and then we'll receive it. Okay, so this time the server says, fine, this is the response, right? 
And if you see, it's, it kind of looks like uh, what we got using curl, right? We see the author, uh, we see all the headers, but it's just like one chunk of text. And that's what HTTP one is really, it's just a chunk of text. So we, if, you know, let's, let's take that data, right? So this is okay, um, response packet is um, that. And if you print that out, right? Response packet, uh, not packet, packet. Uh, we'll see that the response has a specific structure, HTTP 1.1, 200 OK slash R slash N, and so on, right? The same kind of response. Now we just need to parse it, right? So this is all we need to do when we execute the request, right? So with all that info, let's start doing what we want to do, right? Um, so that's our request. And as soon as we get a request, we're going to connect to the server. So we'll say, okay, connection, gen TCP uh, connect, request URI dot host. So uh, another quick thing here is, um, if you use the URI module to parse something like this, uh, um, clear, uh, if you use the request module, uh, sorry, URI module to parse something like this, uh, I can has ip.com. You'll see it has something called authority and host. I'll use the host and uh, we'll pass it through the two car list function to convert it into a car list. And we're just gonna say uh, request URI's port. We're connecting to that port. Um, and we're going to have some you know standard options, right? So one is binary. Another is um, uh, active false. So active, what active false does is it active true. If you set active to true, um, what Erlang is going to do is um, what Gen TCP is going to do is every packet it receives from the server as, as a response, it's going to send that as a message to your current processes mailbox. So we don't want that. Um, we want to explicitly receive by using gen tcp receive, right? But if you don't want that, you could use active false, active true. Um, we got that and there's, there's a whole host of options which you can see using inet set opts, right? Um, so if you look at the documentation for this method on, uh, so this was not compiled with docs, but if you look at the documentation for this on the Erlang docs, you'll see all the options available. Right and the explanation for all of them. So you'll you can use any of those options here. Right. So uh, we're opening a connection. What we want to do now is we want to uh, send it a request packet. Right. So I'll say uh, the request packet, and we know how it looks. Right. So let's just copy this. Uh, that's the request packet. We'll say it's a get. Um, you know what, for now, let's just hard code the, the request packet. I'll say slash r slash n, uh, host slash r slash n, accept slash r slash n, slash r slash n. So that's our request packet. It's our request. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say gen tcp send um, to that connection our request packet. And we're gonna make sure we were able to send it properly. And then we're going to receive everything that you've got um, with a timeout of one second. And we're going to return that. So for now, that's, that's good, right? So let's recompile our simple HTTP module. Let's alias simple HTTP request. Uh, and uh, we want to say simple HTTP dot request request. Well, we already had that somewhere. Uh, come on. Okay, so we already had that then. So now we're getting the response. Yeah. So 
this is awesome. Now we've we've written a client which is able to make a request and it's just giving us the binary of the HTTP response without parsing it properly. So um, let's do some parsing to make this nice and clean. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say uh, we have a response object. Uh, we have, uh, so the first thing we want to do is, yeah, so let, let's do this. So you have a response object which has a status code because um, we wanted that 200 or whatever uh, status returned is. Mm, we want the headers. We want the body. That's all we want, really. Yeah, because that should give you everything you need. You have the response status code here in the first line. Uh, the rest of them are headers. And then the finally, the last chunk is the body. So that's good. Um, so we don't need a new here because the cost, you know, we will be writing code to parse that. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to parse the response. So, um, so first here we are um, building the request uh, packet. Then we want to parse the response, right? So to parse the response, uh, Gen TCP actually has a few tools. Um, one of those tools is you can set Gen TCP. Okay, so uh, we're building the packet and sending it, right? So here, this is this is send the request, and then this is receive the response, right? So. GenTP um, has a few tools which help us parse things properly, right? Now, if you look at the response, the shape of the response is, um, uh, is you have, um, let's see, I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna uh, say, okay, response. And then we'll say, we'll just print the response. So you'll see, it has the first line and then a slash r slash and the first line has the status code and then the line after that has a structure where you know you have the header colon some value header colon some value so on and then you have two new an empty new line uh, an empty line followed by the body right and another thing to note here is you have something called a content length which tells you how long the body is so here it's 14. If you look at this guy, uh, string dot length, or you know, actually that's it's not string dot length. Um, it's a byte size of the response is 13. That's strange. There's probably more stuff in there, uh, but it's usually well, not usually. Every time it's the size of the response. So I actually here, if you see, there is a new line at the end, see? So that's why it's 14, right? So if you look at that, byte size is of this guy is 14. That makes sense. Now, um, now what do we want to do here? We want to parse the response, right? So Gen TCP has um, um, a mode where we can say, I want, I want you to parse it line by line and give me one line every time I say receive. Um, and the way you do that is you say inet, inet, set opts, uh, connection, and we're, we're setting some options, right? One of those is the packet. And the packet has something called line, which means it's going to parse things line by line. So after this, when you do a Gen TCP receive, it's just going to give you the first line. Um, let's let's test that, right? So um, so we run the whole thing again. Uh, we didn't recompile it, right? So uh, let's uh, recompile uh, simple HTTP, and uh, we do that, and you see the response now just has just the one line. So. Um, this makes it easy for us to parse things. Uh, so we can say the first line is going to be the status line. So we're going to parse it. So we'll say that and we can match it against HTTP slash 1.1. 1 
um, and space and then we have three bytes which have the status code right i'll say um status code string is um byte size is uh three actually binary size binary size is three and uh i'll say whatever comes after that just ignore it right so i'll say rest we don't care so that's our status code string right so now we can say response has a status code of uh, status code of uh, what does it have um, string to integer status code string yeah so let's let's check that out okay so I'll clear this and we'll um, reload simple HTTP and then we'll run that uh, now we're seeing that we don't have that response so we have a different response so let's uh, let's remove that uh, and now we have okay HTTP 1.1 okay so yeah so we have an error here uh, this guy is in a tuple right so we'll say uh, surround this in a uh, boy in a tuple and the tuple and, and an okay tuple so I'll say that and uh, now we're getting a response with a status code 200 awesome that's good that's good uh, so we get the, um, the status code and now let's parse the headers right so we can parse we're getting multiple headers right so what we can do as we can say so what we need to do here is we need to parse as long as the return response is not slash r slash an empty line essentially right so um hmm. so how can we do this we can say we can say um uh okay oh, well there, there are a bunch of ways to do this let's do it in a simple functional way right so i'll say uh we're going to receive the we're going to send um we're going to call a function called parse headers uh with the connection and what it's going to do is it's going to call parse headers um uh, with uh a bunch of headers right so i'll just give it an empty list and what it will do ah, i don't want to do this okay so um another way we can do this is we can use stream to kind of do this as many times as we want till we hit slash r slash n because the number of headers is not a, like a finite well it's a finite number but we don't know how long it's gonna be might be one header, two headers, hundred headers. So uh, we can say stream dot um, iterate, and this is a function. Oh man, let me. Uh, why is this guy complaining? Uh, so if you go back to simple HTTP. And uh, here we're saying stream dot iterate. Yeah, my my Elixir LS is failing for some reason. So stream dot iterate, right? So we can look at stream uh, stream dot iterate. It takes a start value and a next function, and it gives us the next value as long as we want it, right? So this is like an infinite stream. So we'll say stream dot iterate. Uh, the first value. Uh, yeah so let's say the first value is zero right yeah why not and then the next value is going to be you know what the first value so we want we essentially want a bunch of headers right so we can say the first value is 10 tcp dot receive 
connection, zero, thousand, right? So that's our first value. And then the next value, uh, this is probably not the best way, but you know, I can't think of another, let's see, uh, H stream. Um, so stream has uh, map a stream. I want essentially I want like an infinite stream. Uh, stream iterate stream. Stream cycle. Is that a stream cycle? Yeah, there's a stream cycle, which cycles through elements. So maybe we can use that, right? So that makes stream cycle, right? So we'll just go through a list. We don't care what that value is, right? Because um, that's going to give us like an infinite stream of things. I'll say stream. Uh, let me clear this and show you guys what I mean. Stream dot cycle. I want to say zero. And um, we want to get 10 elements. So take 10. Enum. Yeah, so that gives us 10 elements. So I want to go as long as I can. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say stream cycle, which gives us an infinite stream. And then we'll pipe it into uh, a map function. So stream dot map. And this guy, what this guy's, this guy's just going to ignore the value it's getting. And this guy is then going to say gen TCP dot receive connection zero thousand right and that value is okay and uh, header line right? this is the header line and I'm just gonna return the header line out of this right so this is like each header line um, and then we're going to go through this as long as um, enum all right stream dot take or is there a enum dot take while uh, enum dot take while allows us to take things while a condition is true so we'll say take these things as long as the header well, as long as the line is not an empty line, right? So if the line is an empty line, we need to stop. So as long as the line is not empty, keep going. And then we're going to take that list and just going to parse it, right? So we'll just, um, uh, what we can do here is we can say enum.map, um, enum.map, Okay, what do we want to do here? We want to say split the line on the colon, right? So we'll say uh, this is the header line. So we'll say uh, x uh, and we'll do something here, right? So we'll say split it on the colon, right? So we'll say we have a key and a value uh, and we'll split it on the colon. Split what on the colon? Split the x on the colon. And um, we'll take two parts because might be the the value also might have colons we don't know so we'll just do that and uh, we're going to return a tuple with a key and we'll trim the new line and whatnot the the spaces here um, and then we'll uh, shove it into a map that gives us the headers Let's say headers right. And uh, here we'll just say headers is headers. So awesome. So now we got the headers. Um, so let's see. Let's uh, reload this whole thing and run it through and see what we get. So we got a response where the headers have access control. It has the X order. It has the content length, which is 14. One thing though, HTTP is a protocol where the the case of the header doesn't matter. So we should have lower case to all of it to make our lives easier. And which is what Cowboy does. Um, so let's do that. So here, when we get the key, let's pass it through string down case, right? So now 
we got down keys to things so, and we can look at content length and uh, read that as a body so um, since we've shoved all of this into a map we can say content length equal to headers content length but if there's no content length like this well you know what it's okay we'll just say content length which is a string so let's uh, convert it into an integer and I'll say body uh, actually let's do it on another line so we'll say body is body and body is gen tcp receive uh, from connection I don't want to say zero I want to say body which is um, content length right so content length and uh, say uh, the same right one millisecond one second so if you reload this the body is now error e inval oh i know we so we're still in line mode right um so we're still in line mode and then we're trying to say, you know, give me the whole body, even with new lines. And here, I assume what's happening is we're saying, give me 14 character, 14 bytes. But it has only 13 bytes before the new line. So it gives you 13 bytes or whatever. So we need to actually fix the fix the uh, properties here. So we'll say inet set opts. Uh, connection we need to make it go back to the raw mode of the packet right so we'll do that and uh, let's match it here too right? so we'll just do that and now body is okay tuple we don't want the okay there so we'll say okay Right, so just do the right match, and now we have the body. Perfect. We're able to make requests to different servers, and we're able to get the responses and whatnot. Now, um, I want to make a request to um, maybe another site. So if you go to putty dot, yeah, I have a website called putty dot com. So if we go there, right? So or like, let's go to a specific you want. So letters, right? I want to go there and I want to see a response. So let's do that. So we'll say response dot, um, so we'll say request dot new. That's the URL I want you to hit and make the request. And this guy's complaining, right? So we got a response, but the response is a what kind of response is it? It's a 404. Um, oh, oh, okay. So if you look at the debug info, right? So what are we sending? We have, yeah, everything looks good. But I want to look at the, res yeah. So if you look at the request packet, right? The, the request packet is being sent to a server, which looks, I mean, so we're connecting to, putty.minhajuddin.com server and we're saying give me the data for like this separate host it doesn't make sense right so um we need to fix that right so the request packet the way we build this needs to be fixed um and what we can do is we can actually use an io list here right so we'll say uh for now let's just say it's going to be a get always and um so we have a get and then since we have a URI, so I'm just gonna say URI equal to request URI. And we'll say URI dot path. We have that. And then we have this um, string space HTTP slash 1.1. And then we have the slash r slash n. So um, I wanna, Okay, I want to capture these in a few constants. So let's put these here. So I'll say line. Um, um, uh, yeah, uh, what the heck? CRLF, right? So I'll just say CRLF uh, is a slash R slash N, right? 
and then we have uh, HTTP version, right, which is HTTP slash 1.1, yeah? Um, and then let's also define a space, which is that, right? So we'll say that. Um, so now we have get URI path, um, and we'll also do another thing, right? So we'll say um, uh, method, uh, method request dot method, right? So I'll say request method is request method, right? Um, uh, okay, and then we have uh, a space, uh, then we have a URI path, and then we have our space, and then we have HTTP 1.1, which is uh, the HTTP version, then we have a CRLF, right? And then, so that's the first line. And then what do we have? Uh, we have a host, so I'll say um, host. Uh, host is kind of an important header. So we'll say host colon space. And um, the host is gonna come from the host of the URI. So we'll just say URI.host. And then we have a CRLF. Uh, and then I guess that's all you need, really. Um, you also need uh, one extra CRLF, right? Uh, so that's our request packet. Um, yeah, that's our request packet. Uh, let's send it. And then we also need to define a request method. Uh, so I'll say def p request method um, for get it is get uh, for others we'll define them later right so now um, we'll uh, clear reload uh, simple HTTP so now we're getting a response which is a 200 and we're getting some data in the response. Um, so I want to save that somewhere. So we already have the response. We'll say the response is V response dot body. I want to save that in file dot write temp a. Um, yeah. And let's look at that response. So a good way to compare if two files are the same is by looking at their hashes. So I just use MD sum uh, temp a. That's the MD sum of the response that our, our our simple HTTP client created. Now let's save this guy. So I want to save this guy and downloads letters HTML, right? And we want to see the MD5 sum of that, which is downloads letter. Oh, it's different. What? That's strange. So let's uh, use curl to capture that response. Um, so that's the URL we're sending the request to. So I want to uh, make sure I'm using the same request. Um, so go to go here, say curl minus o temp b, and if you say md5 sum temp b, is that? Hmm, that is really strange. So let's look at the diff between temp a and temp b. Um, uh, it's the same then why it does it have a different MD5 sum? So MD5 sum, oh, it is the same. It is the same. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so what's the MD5 sum of downloads letters? Maybe, the, oh, I don't know. Maybe the browser is saving it in a different way. So uh, if you look at the WIM diff of temp A, um, yeah, the, bri the browser is adding more stuff like content type and uh, it's saving it in just a tiny bit different way. Oh, it's also, oh, okay. So it's actually rendering the JavaScript. 
because I see the letter M here. <laughs> so anyway, that's fine. It's fine. As long as we're compatible with curl, I'm happy. Okay. So we've, like we've we've done a good job here. We've defined a function. Sorry, we've defined a simple. We've we've, we've written a simple HTTP client, and it works. Um, uh, the only thing, okay, I guess, let's see, let's see what's missing here. Uh, what, what have we got here? So we've got everything we wanted. Uh, it can't send post requests as of now, right? Because it doesn't have the post um, method support. So I'll say, let add, let's add that post and uh, let's go back, right? In the packet, we're not rendering the body, right? So that's another thing we should be doing. So we'll say um, CRLF um, request.body. And if we, if we have a body, we should also have, we should also have um, the content length, right? So I'll say content length uh, request.body. So content length uh, header, a request content length header, yeah? So yeah, why not be specific, very specific. So we'll say uh, def p request content type length header, um, takes the body and um, um, so what we wanna do here is we wanna say um, if the body um, so we'll say do, uh, do end, come on. Uh, if by, uh, so we'll get the byte size first, right? So I'll say uh, content length is, yeah, content length is byte size off. Um, this could be an IO list. So say erlang dot IO list to binary body. Um, and we'll say if content length equal to zero, we'll return an empty list. Otherwise, we'll return um, the header. And the header is going to be um, content length uh, colon space um, the string representation of the content length number and uh, CRLF, right? Uh, not the best code, but should work. So let's try to send um, this request to some API we know works, right? So I know there's something called kvdb.io, which uh, allows you to, um, you know, set keys and whatnot, uh, I mean, set values using um, HTTP. So here we're saying curl, uh, set the integer for this. Let's let's do it, right? So I wanna say, let me try it. Let, let's try it using curl first. So curl, I'll set it to 42, 42, 42. Packet not found. Uh, come on. Create a bucket, uh, free, sign up now. Fubar at mailinator.com. That's my email. Um, public read, public write, that's okay. Um, that's, that's good, I don't care. So here, uh, we'll go to that. What, it ends with a V. Yeah, okay, I should have put a space there. So um, that's good. Now, uh, if you look at the value available there, it's that, right? Now let's try to write this from the, oh, I don't know if it works with HTTP. Let's try that. Um, use HTTP. <laughs> I can't do that, buddy. Uh, okay, that's strange. Okay, so. Um, Pikachu API. I know there's an API called P Pokey API. Um, let's see, we have 
a bunch of things here. Um, Pokemon, check out the docs. Post, how do I do a post here? Get, get, post. Okay, I, uh, hmm, that's interesting. This, yeah, I want to make a post. Um, so I actually have a debug server. Um, oh, there's an HTTP debugger too. What does this guy do? I don't know. Um, go HTTP debug. I actually remember that. So I'll say go get uh, github.com HTTP debug. This is like a, I don't have go. Wow. So I actually, yeah. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to try out was making a post request, but you know what? We could just, um, we could just try making a request and seeing what happens, right? So what I'm gonna do here is um, make a post request to this API, right? So I'll say method is post and uh, body is body as um, foo. So, oh, we don't have key value args here. So that's my bad. Uh, method is post, headers are empty. We're not even using the headers, so you gotta change that. But um, request URI, okay, so request URI, request.new doesn't take anything. Uh, so we gotta change that. Headers, body, um, headers, body right so we got that um, so this is good now when we send the request we could even um, we could even capture the request packet and print it just debugging right so we could say logger um, you know what we could just say io dot puts and um, Erlang io list to binary again let's just to debug this info uh, to help us debug, right? I'll say uh, this is the request. And if you see, we're sending a request which says post letters SCTB 1.1. We have a host, we have a content length. Everything looks good. Unfortunately, this server doesn't accept posts, which is expected because it's supposed to just serve. Um, to some some files static files right well we could add a head right because the head is a valid so if it works for get it should work for head right so we'll just tweak this a little bit and um, say we don't have that but the head the method we want is going to be head so um, so this guy is um, actually failing with a timeout so maybe uh, we could look at uh, we could look at Wireshark and see what's going on here right um, well no well yeah we could so I could say um, call uh, putty dot this guy and uh, just look at the, the host uh, is that so we'll change our Wireshark to look at this guy and uh, here here we sent the request and that's a get so we'll just reset this and uh, make another request what's going on here so we had we made the request uh, and uh, Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Because uh, we are doing a get ahead instead of a get. That's strange. Maybe 
maybe it doesn't work for heads um our our um our server doesn't serve head requests either but it should have anyway um hopefully this gave you guys like enough info to um try out gen tcp on your own okay so looks like head is being blocked by the server for some reason that's interesting that's really interesting okay um all right so yeah you know what um we, we built a really good um really functional http client it's not really it's not very performant but it works so uh, i hope you take this and um, try it out on your own and make it better um, till the next session have a good night bye